here to open the way of the future to children who belong to the future. Anything else is not worth the trouble. The Mamiga lost, they don't know anymore why they wake up, you know. There is a huge uh, worldwide cries among human beings because they don't understand anymore what is the meaning of life. If you think schools, uh, beginning of the century and school today, is, uh, there is not much changes. The, the conventional, conventional system, educational system, is pumping information. Information we have a lot, too much. We are so much going into, you know, these mechanics and, and education is now so much mechanized. To, to have these little islands of uh, yeah, spaces where children can still be, Learning is a question of values, what we want to serve all together. We need to, to, to come back here, because all the question in modern world is what we want to buy, what we want to win, when we want to, to own. But stop it! What we want to serve, what we want to create all together. So there is a lot of power in education. The past is our foundation, the present is our material, the future is our aim and our summit. Oroville is an international township in South India created 50 years ago. It is recognized and endorsed internationally for being a successful and unique model project in many fields such as ecology and education. The purpose of such an education is to create the conditions for the emergence of a new way of being on Earth. Seven. My idea of, a, of, a, of an education is teaching by example. It's a philosophy more than a, than a technicality. Hey, come. I think the mistake that a lot of people make is to think that the only place that you learn is in a classroom. Everyone stay a two meter away from this or you're going to be... Everything you do, if you're not doing something that you can share with a child, then you're not doing the right thing, you know? A, think it's A, round, you're going to go up. I believe that integral education is for every child. Instead of teaching a, a content of subjects, it's something that is completely new and revolutionary and hasn't been done before. Because we're not interested in the outcome, we're interested in the process, in understanding the process that the child is going through. We're not looking at transferring knowledge, but awakening something in inside the child instead, which is the development of faculties <laughs> in his search for the causes of the phenomenon about him, man has obviously learned an enormous number of things about his environment. But there is still one thing that remains unknown to him, and that unknown is man himself. TLC does not look like a traditional school. Learning may not be visible if you're looking from the perspective of the usual education that aims at reproducing the same society that is currently in breakdown. It's one of the most outspoken 
I guess, forms of integral learning. But then that makes it also controversial. Uh, there's a whole group of people in Oroville who think that TLC only climbs trees. In the traditional system, we have ways of measuring and observing and comparing uh, children to each other. And a struggle we have had when working with, uh, with this approach is that we don't have any of that and there's nothing to fall back to to tell us that this is where we are at right now with this child. And it makes it difficult also for parents because we can't give direct answer that your child has an A or a B or is in grade three or five. We're trying to find something else that can give us indications of the journey that the child is on and that something is happening, that there is a growth taking place, that there are changes, uh, that there is development. One of the issues that has been ongoing from the beginning is the thing with recognition. And that is what is bringing all this insecurity. That's why parents are sending their children out to mm -hmm. schools around here. That's why parents are moving here and there because they don't know what knowledge their kids are actually getting. This research emerged from the need for introspection in order to discover how to assess the learning community's daily practices. Integral education, we use the words without really knowing what it is. And then we talk about all these big words, but actually it's about what is practice with kids. We need to work on the assessment of what we're doing to go deeper with a global perspective to be able to be recognized as oral education. I joined TLC in this quest filming the journey of this research. Take your children and teach them the splendor of disobedience. It's risky, but it's riskier to never do it. It's okay. And when you are ready to come and talk, we are always here to listen. Come to you. and talk! I'm never gonna come and talk about open spaces! Open spaces deserve to die! I changed. I hate open spaces. Because it got a lot worse. Mm. Everything and everybody fun left. What we work on the most in TLC mm. is the vital education. It's the it's what takes the most place. It, it's what we see is the, the biggest need. And without, without working through that, the children are not ready for anything else. We are not talking in that kind of language. I don't in care. This, okay, so if you don't care, you have not the right to be here. Okay, okay. then leave me go. I'm okay. going home. So you're not going to be alone without my friends. Well, that is what not you're choosing, Manu. I'm not. You are choosing that. I'm not. You are, you are not able to be around You people. are just lying some stupid things. I'm choosing whatever I'm choosing. I'm doing whatever I so want. Is... There are some extremes that I see in TLC that um, seems, to, seems to be something that they've been struggling with for a while. And um, because TLC is a place where you allow children to express freely, they might also express anger or, or something else that's bothering them in, in a way that is not considered socially acceptable. But if you're saying, I am ready to receive you as you are, then you need to be ready to receive whatever is thrown at you. You can't say, I'll take only the good and whenever there's bad, um, I'll just pretend or, or just, you know, that's, that's not what we want. <laughs> All my attention was grabbed by this extraordinary freedom given to the children. And at the same time, I felt lost in what seemed to be lacking with regards to any kind of structure. I am. And I'm holding you because I care about you. 
Let me go! No, I will not let you go. Your mom also told me you're good at cooking. Do you cook often at home? You don't even know where I want to go! No, I don't. To Master Chef! Really? Yes! Have you seen have you ever seen Masters of Junior? Yes, I want to. Do you have any it. favorite really? What yeah. would you cook? What would be your like Kavi's signature dish at Master Chef? Pasta and broccoli. Really? So how do you make it? <laughs> do you I couldn't imagine such a gigantic challenge between the ideal, the dream of tomorrow, and the reality of the needs of today. We cannot avoid our kids the suffering, the struggling of the growing. But definitely we can be supportive in difficult moments. We are all different. And most of the time they are really useful for us. That we are stuck in our little jail, you know, of a mental structure of the definition of normality that actually doesn't exist because normality is something that changes in the time, in the place. Oh, I cannot give. You are super good in giving love. Yes. Yes, because until now I felt like you were not listening even. And then we will reflect on that, okay? But the violent kids, the screaming kids, the kicking, the, they, they are actually our teachers that we need to stop again and observe what is going on. How can we improve our approach? How can we learn? How can we accommodate this? We need to make a U-turn towards a better humanity. So how do we redesign education with this evolutionary purpose? The eye of my camera first needed to spot this learning and then find what nurtures or prevents it. Where can I see free progress in this context? sense of impossibility is the beginning of all possibilities. This is, a, this is called a reconciliation. And uh, it's, a, it's a, actually a token gesture to the quarrel. That was a, there was a quarrel that divided the, the TLC uh, two years ago. And, um, and it's still not completely healed. It is not to get the other person to I mean, One of the, the principles of, of the TLC is that the parents should be, uh, should be somehow involved. So there's not this gap because that's really what went wrong to some extent before. I think the gap between the parents and the, and the children, the parents think the teachers aren't doing a good job. You know, they, they're critical. You know, it's, a, it's one of the, it's one of the, the tragedies of, of parenting, really. If you're involved in education, you have more to do with parents than you do with children. Because uh, you can so clearly see the parent reflected in the child. What is make you feel bored here and what you would like to change? What is you not doing anything? Can you look at her please when you say that? Another challenge in this research was the need to build trust and understanding in the parents. How can TLC manage to build harmony and care for the wider group of learners, including the adults? It requires so much energy, so much human resources to manage this and uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's too much. Yeah, one of the main problem is the decoordination. We are so many people with different visions, with different ideas, different perception, how to make everything be harmonious in this difference. Uh, this is, I think, is the real challenge. Sometimes the kids has a bit to be pushed 
in not getting lost in, in the space, just hanging around like, uh, you know, zombies going around because sometimes it happens. What are they agreeing to is one thing, but uh, once they agree to it, if it's not it's happening, happening, if it's not happening, what, do do? Okay. what does it mean? Does it mean you're in complete violation of the core values of who TLC is? Obviously, there isn't a, a policy as if you don't follow this, you're kicked out. If you mm. don't follow this, we want to know why. Mm. And so, each one will have a different reason why, and each one will have a different need to, to work towards being able to adhere mm. to this. You get into contact with these interesting people having these funny ideas about uh, no structure at all. But for me, um, structure needs to emerge. It shouldn't be imposed. It should be a walking stick and not uh, a harness. It should not limit you. It should support you when you need it. I think chaos is a necessary part of living and life. So then again, how do you strike the balance of holding that environment and allowing for certain things, but at the same time not affecting to, allowing it to sort of affect everything that's going on. So it's a very difficult balance to strike and it requires the people holding space to really be present, aware and centered themselves so that they can, you know, hold and, and direct it. And, and that for me is a beautiful challenge to work with. Right now we don't know where it sits, which is the, the foundation on which we are basing all these decisions of the doing. We're very lost and we don't even know where to start looking. There's something about TLC because it truly is a community that it, in a way, it requires full presence and full commitment. Because there's no clear leadership or clear hierarchies, it's so vast that sometimes I don't know, you know, which direction to go. Group dynamics is for me the core of everything and our relationships, you know, and the even if leader. even if life is difficult, but if we are able to relate and communicate, we will manage. Whereas if even if life is beautiful, but we can't communicate, well, we'll always be in conflict, you know? So it, it is the core, but we have not been educated to have the skills for that. So it is very scary. We learned that conflict is not safe and you shouldn't be honest and you should try to be polite or run away or... So it's for me, it's a paradigm shift. And in that sense, it's not something that is quick. It's a, it's a life journey. And what about me? Was I trusting the TLC process? So I was blocking myself. Uh and I also feel blocked, so I would like more connection with Tamar. We are very different in our ways, and I feel that you have an expectation that your way will be adopted by all those around you in order for you to feel welcomed. Because of all the history of the last 10 years, my reaction is to step back and to let it unfold, and then to slowly see whether I would like to engage with it or not. But it's but but if I don't, I am not anybody to block anything. So how do we come back and restore connection, restore the sense of that we all we all matter, you know? The decision is so dependent contextual. It's so difficult to design which is the best solution or the best answer, which is why it becomes more complex when there's a group involved. If we can use this current circle around this, you know, and try to not get caught up in all that whole hurricane of things and try to find the eye of it and try to see deeply where does this go down, where is this roots coming from, I think that journey will really help us reach a kind of for want of a better word, a kind of awakening, a kind of come to a place of, you know, this is what it will probably work. My senses, my heart and mind were not yet open enough to discern where free progress was upending. 
How can it be made tangible? Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. He's eating. We're discovering about these bugs. And now we know that they like these leaves. And, and after we'll do a creative writing and story. Before. Ah! What's lit on you? Get up, get up, get up, get up. Ah! On your pants. Oh. Okay, he seems better. Do you see the bleeding? They bleed, they bleed gray blood. Did you see that gray stuff coming out? We're doing a race. I know you two are the fastest we have. Hey, how about we take this guy? The psychic being is that true voice that speaks inside. Under all the clutter and all the pulls and all the, the vital forces and the struggles, when all that is pushed to the side and one can listen in beyond that, that I think is the, the place of the psychic being. And the goal of the education is to, to allow the children to, to find that voice and to be able to hear that voice that we don't usually hear very much. Then the child can really be free. And we were wondering how do we capture the intangible? Because we are very clear that we don't want to assess progress of a child in definitives of uh, whether they can, whether they learn to read or write or other skills. That's not the purpose. With the discovery of the magic moments, the principles of integral education start to unveil. No, they don't know you're talking to them. They know you're communicating with them. Like, um, once we did this test with a papaya tree, it's gonna be a happy little plant. In three years, it's gonna become this. And, and so that's what we're calling magic moments, a glow on a moment, like a spotlight on it, and it shows us something. Because otherwise, without these showings, we really not know what's going on inside. From this initial unclarity, there was a true shift in perspective. Recognizing moments both beautiful and challenging as signs of learning. Then looking at this year are the what we call the magic moments, the indicators or the shifts, whether uh, positive or big struggles that a child goes through over time. And by observing these and noting these down, we can keep track of the movement that a child goes through over a year and the changes and what, what actually has helped the child to move forward. I have to be purple with purple. Purple. Mm -hmm. Yes, this. Ah, this is okay. It. And this is the magic moment where you give yourself the chance to realign. It's the same. It's the same. Yes. Give me five. Very good. And the, you see the, the, the light in the eyes in this moment. For me, it's so magic. <laughs> and what are you going to In oneself lies the whole world, and if you know how to look and learn, the door is there and the key is in your hand. Nobody on earth can give you either the key or the door to open, except yourself. We think it's a him. Uh-oh. What? 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 This? He opened his beak and he actually drank. We know how to make worms now. Yeah, we have to find worms and cut, chop them in pieces. Three important. principles are like the, the how of integral education, how to put it in practice yes. with the children. And by developing their faculties, they develop their consciousness. And uh, the first principle, nothing can be taught, is basically seeing that everything is already within the child, that they are, they are there 
uh, driving their own learning process. And as adults, we're only there to, to help and guide and to offer the environments and the situations through which the children can discover. How the ego works, where their anger is coming from. I got annoyed because he twisted his arm. And instead use the vital for creation and creativity. And the pull won't be towards the self, it'll be towards the collective. Can I cut this one? Yes, but in a way that you don't plug out the knives. The first principle becomes tangible through self-knowledge. All that is needed for learning and growth already exists inside each child. Yay, bravo, Mira! Got it. How did you sleep last week, one to five? The barometer is like a quick check on where you are at. So on, on a weekly basis, I meet the children for a longer reflection over the week. It gives us insights into their different aspects of their life. And I'm actually doing Seeing how slowly for them this is bringing a lot of self-awareness. I feel like when I work for a long time, I just feel like it's enough. You might need a break and go and to some other work. Nothing really maybe. specifically distracts me, but when I work for too long, then it gets really frustrating and just really distracting. If I have like a few minute break before, mm -hmm. and then I come in, then I can stay focused for much longer. So one, two, three, four, five. Again, thousand. Three baby box. I mean, these are three. These are hundreds. Three hundreds. hundreds. For example, Mira, she oh. hated math. And now, she, uh, in the video, a little more recent, she's just doing math, loving it, and it was it's really nice to look back and see how much we finished. Oh, it went around the office. Yeah, pull your work out. Yeah, and here is the practice. Oopsie! Usually I would mind a lot because imperfect things really annoy me, but this time, I don't really care. I'm not going to have it for too, too long. So and how have you felt this week with your friends? My friends, five. Yeah. And with five. your family? Five. And with your learning? Just slightly Four. southwest. Four? They took Britain. Yeah. They took London. They took Spain. They took Gong. The Ulysses is not real. Yeah, he was real. Oh. oh. So they just copied him. If you follow the child uh, inner self and you give the space and time to do this, uh, the child learns by themselves. You really don't need to teach anything. And if you start from the smaller kids, you can see they, they grow in this and they are able to learn whenever they want, how they want, and they learn how to learn. But they have already, they, you are not teaching anything actually. You made that with your mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you put this show, this will happen. I think the most important qualities are observing. Observing yourself. Observing the children. And trying to, to live yourself what you want to offer the children. Because without trying to be that yourself and to work on that yourself, you actually have very little to offer. We allow our bodies to stop moving. And we give ourselves a break. All the doing on the outside so that we can start noticing what is happening on the inside. 
I think that's one of the first attitudes that needs to, to come into this work is just to slow down because when we move fast, then uh, we, we impede actually, I think, things to, the, the real thing to emerge rather than something that's imposed. One always say about uh, facilitating an ATB class, they say before you enter the hall, you leave yourself outside. Now, I mean, this is almost impossible, but it's an aspiration. And I think it's the same thing when we interact with a child, to leave ourselves outside, because ourselves, we have these likes and dislikes and preferences and, and no, just to have literally, you know, one psychic being uh, in front of another. Well, I think the word allow is the, is the biggest word, just to allow. This way we and to trust, to really trust the child, that the child will, will, will be led by that. Because the more I am that, then it just becomes a, a, an example. No, this is where he's dead. But then when he dies, his spirit is going to come. And he's going to take all the treasure, I think. Through the sun, through the atmosphere, you can work out deeper things, emotions or ideas that come up and uh, play them out and see them and as such it has a like a healing effect without knowing. Once upon a time there lived a girl called Goldilocks who had very gold hair. <laughs> <laughs> to touch upon the soul of things, to nourish this what seems impossible and what the rational mind has so much condemned actually or, or reduced us. Find anything which is like hard and like long, but like it looks pretty. Hmm? Hard and long and pretty? Like a door. Mandala is a universe, it's a sacred circle. It's something magic that manifests of oneself and unveil this hidden aspect of oneself to, to manifest the real higher being that is inside each of us. This emptiness that we, we keep inside, we are the only one capable to fulfill. You are the first in charge, really. When I enter the space, most of the time, I just put the intention of letting all the expression to just be. We do sound exploration mainly. So that means that I put myself mainly as a mirror there. I don't have a stereotype idea of what kind of work I would do with the children, really, because I, I like it to keep it like that, very spontaneous, very intuitive. To close your eyes and you have to be not upset. You have to always close your eyes. You have to always be happy in this intention. Thank you. Because uh, a child, through sound and a good vibration, can feel, if it feels that it has the space to express that anger, then he can also understand that that anger can leave that space and become something else. Because I find it more efficient and words that can bring the child more into a mental work, which maybe they're not ready. Yeah, 
and just lift them back and breathe in. You don't have to overdo it. I don't want to see this. Just close your eyes. The first place you feel hunger is here. The first place you feel love and happiness is also here. Okay? So okay. make sure that that is open, not shut, not clamped. Riding horses makes me feel happy. <laughs> when I do canter on her, it feels like I'm free, you know? Finally, the children will grow up in an atmosphere of natural oneness, where there will be no I, or you, or mine, or yours. Where rather than learning to constantly put up screens and mental barriers, they will learn to be consciously what they have always been unconsciously. Okay. You were about here, weren't you? My foot is about, I don't know, 10. So, how much? 21. Because I'm trying to find out how much Tara pulled me up. So I pulled you 1,260, you pulled me 966. And then, I, so I pulled you 294 centimeters more. Yeah. I just spent all of my time figuring that. So the mind must be consulted in its own growth, wants to allow children to grow at their own pace, learn when they are ready to learn something, take the amount of time that they want to explore each area that they're growing in. This is basically the principle that is taking us out of the 1800s factory model of education, where uh, school was trying to form children into the same end product, same curriculum, uh, grades, sorting children by age. How did you help your brain to be, stay focused? Um, I know he's helping me because he's controlling me. He's inside, I don't know what he did. Learning to observe where each child is at, and then the second one goes on to nine. And each child has different needs at different times and use that as the doorway for an interdisciplinary learning. Yes, there is a need for a structure, but the way the structure is emerging here is very different from that of a traditional system. I think it was a little challenging for me to see how everyone's learning so fast and I was like I was learning yeah. pretty slowly but after a bit I just realized that it was just my pace and it's nothing got to do with me or anything else. It's okay to be different, it's fine to be slow or fast, um, not taking anything personally or thinking that they're better than me in any way. So really just to keep trusting that, to keep watching that, to keep allowing different paces, different times for, uh, for their own inner understandings of what, what inspires them, where they want to go, what they want to do, and not try to fix anything because actually nothing is broken. No, not okay! <laughs> That at sometimes we feel, let's say, happy, and sometimes we feel mm, sad. Sad. And I'm feeling like this. What are you missing from that? Everything. Like what? My school, my family, my friends. Hmm? You think about that a lot? Mm -hmm. What are the things that you <laughs> that you miss the most in your school there? Hmm? 
<laughs> my teachers. But can you see that that is not doesn't make what we're trying to do here bad? No. That it's it, no. Can you see that? No. We can't replace what you had there. And that was something different. No. But we're also here for you. We also have friends here. We're also trying to make the best for you here. It's like going away from blame to self-responsibility and what is the impact? Learning becomes an interindependent process. Interindependence is the framework that gives the consistency to the unfolding of human unity. It's basically you say how you feel and there are loads of different feelings and you can just say how you feel and then what you need to make you feel better. I want to be beautiful. Like, you want to be beautiful. beautiful. But I want to be with everything. Uh, I have to be you are more beautiful. In TLC we have always had this difficulty of finding the balance between the needs of the individual and the collective. If it goes too much towards the collective, the individual is lost. And if it goes too much to the individual, then everyone is just thinking about themselves and you get all this greed and me, me, me. And then we have like, okay, how do we balance it back? Somebody promised me that I could go to the snow. How to be in a group, how to handle his anger, how to question, how to make mistakes how to love, how to hate, how to be angry, how to speak to each other, how to respect, how to care. If you are there in TLC and you've been there with this camera, you see that every moment is a learning for Yam. Yam has a dream. What is your dream? Can you say it again? Because it's a beautiful dream. Two of us can be friends. And Why? Then Why I can be two of them. Because when I'm her, his friend, she's not my friend. And if I'm not her friend, he's not my friend. What is challenging in being together? Because you have to compromise and see if he wants something and I don't, then either we can do it or not. To give up on what you want and compromise for the other. Move it. What already is taking place more than we, we thought is the kids working together freely. And so much came out of how, in, how much they learn through that. That's how they learn the most is through their interindependence. Because it's the child and then expanding out with their learning experience through, through the others. If there's any problem or any conflict or anything, that they can just come and help sort it out, but in a nice way where you don't pick sides and you just understand people and what they're saying and try to make other people also understand what they're saying. I think they're learning to be in a group because that's much harder than just being alone. And it's also much funner. For example, when you're alone, you can just do whatever you want. But when you're together, you have to compromise. But there's so many more things that you can do when you're together. And I think there were challenging moments of being together, and they were also very nice ones. No, I think what she means is that you have to share your feelings and needs to the person that most disturbs you. I, I must have stepped on your toes by accident, and your peacock feather must have fell out. I'm so sorry, maybe I was the one making a big deal. And even if I would pull out your peacock feathers, I would have told you. Good to know, thanks. Finding the unity of consciousness, you know. To, to find back what we call here the one in all and the all in one. 
person to remember what is the intention of the community gathering. So that everyone get, feels heard and everyone has a voice step, instead of just teachers. Exactly. So, okay, so you're okay. introducing the topics, chairperson. Yes. I'm time and yes. you're taking notes. That, and you make sure that, you know, what she's bringing up to the throne uh, end up with a decision, a collective decision. Okay, 25 seconds of silence. If someone interrupts, then we're starting it over. We just want to explain the purpose of community gathering for those who don't know. So basically, it's for decision making. Instead of all the adults deciding what you have to do about things that are part of, that everyone is doing, kids get to decide with using voting and stuff. Instead of just the adults deciding everything, everyone gets a vote. If you don't want to be here, it's it's your problem because then you're missing out on the decisions like like you didn't know about the fidgeting because you weren't here. So I feel the energy. And it was way better than when the adults started taking over. And I find it'll it'll like it'll solve things and it makes you feel way better. So I feel like it feels better when a kid is doing it. We have to properly decide and they have to be like some consequence if you don't join community together and otherwise people are just like, okay, no, I'm not coming. So we have to decide, maybe make a vote. And please, then Connie, please, please. We decide please. that it is compulsory. Okay, mm -hmm. now who votes community gathering should be not compulsory. Wait, Connie voted for compulsory. So if you're not coming to community gathering, you either have to do service or your work. That's decided. Yeah. Okay. Walk slowly, don't run. If children are in a position to choose out of their own understanding and awareness, they can assume full responsibility for what they choose, and then they can be regarded as a free individual. To truly know the world, look deeply within your own being. To truly know yourself, take real interest in the world. With the third principle, the direct reality of each learner expands outwards, and the personal and collective they melt together in a living, growing, learning being. It's deeply related to the capacity of everyone living together in an inclusive and participatory and pluricultural society. But me and Sitara, we work really well together and I feel like I work so much better when I'm with her. And slowly turn it down. Nice. Noi siamo parte della natura, noi facciamo parte di un ciclo, eh, c'è questa tendenza dell'uomo dell di mettersi lui al centro e il resto del mondo, no? E invece questo diciamo, paradigma eh, viene cambiato proprio entrando nella natura e osservandola e riconoscendoci come parte di essa. La chiamiamo natural science. This is the fruit inside the river seeds. Io punto tantissimo a portarli nella natura, a fargli osservare e a uh, stimolargli le domande. E gli occhi li hanno molto più buoni dei nostri, perché sono ancora puri, sono ancora attenti, vedono delle cose che noi ormai non vediamo quasi più. I don't think there was much learning like reading and writing learning, but they was learning like the devils to be together, me. to be cooperative, and there was a lot of teamwork. Okay, okay, Satan, okay. Yeah. We're making roasted vegetables in the oven with tzatziki and pumpkin soup. Okay, you can oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pumpkin pie. Oh, 
pie, the crust, a tablespoon, coconut oil. Perhaps this is what brings the philosophy of integral education into practice. Changing position, I don't like to have more. Integral education shifts from competition and comparison towards collaborations. Yeah, I found this one for operating in the fire. This is what builds unity in diversity. I'm making a fire. Do you have bags? Sometimes things are difficult. Okay. We use the recipe as our base for learning English. So if the whole thing is 500 grams, how much is half of it? 250. Exactly. After it's me again. Okay, now you put the yellow into, the, into here. So is it good? Yeah. 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 Sentence. Make a sentence with the word sugar. Mm -hmm. I like sugar because it is very nice. Okay. So we have just enough time to get our dishes done before snack. Dictate the method of the recipe, then check your spelling and punctuation. Honey, cocoa, flowery Beautiful. flour, sweetened sugar, light powder, tiny pinch, briny salt, sour butter, creamy chocolate, oily mixture, fluffy eggs, candy dust, hot degree, long minute. When you come here, we bake, we clean, and then we taste. And if you are now going to leave, that means that next Friday, there is no baking. So if we have a decision as a community that we clean three times a week, what are the consequences if we don't clean? Yeah, what is the question? Yeah. What is consequence? Consequence is what happens punishment. if you don't. It's not a punishment, it's, I'll punish it's, you. it's, the, no. it's the outcome of your, of your action. In TLC, we're supposed to come here and do it. Not to just do another stuff that we want to do. We're not just coming here to have fun. We're <laughs> coming here to do it. We, we often experience a misunderstanding with the term freedom. So freedom is not doing what you want whenever you want. It is learning to take responsibility for yourself and for the collective. In the workshop space, Mohini, Veera, The program Yanya, is very free. Mahindra. But at the same time, each one has responsibilities because we are a part of a community. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and stay right. Straighten up and fly right. And what's the point of making my bed if it's just going to get messy as soon as I get back into it? Like, If a child doesn't want to be a part, um, I don't think we have one way of what we do. I think it's very different in each case. What we like to see is a process to help the child to get to the point where they can join. <laughs> Stop moving, kind of snake. I want to see what snake you are. That's a wolf snake. No. It's not poisonous. It's midly poisonous, actually. It's midly poisonous. It's not deadly. It's See, the first circle is at its neck, and the last one is at its tail. We're making everything very clean. Okay, stop.
I walked around the campus now, I didn't see a single piece of paper anywhere. It really feels like we did a lot of work today and it was very harmonious and really fun and thank you. I feel that this whole uh, research what it showed and coming so strongly from the children is that it's there, but we need to really look at this collective process. We need to put so much, we need to allow so much space, so much more space than what we do for the children just to be with each other and to learn together and let their things emerge. Finding ourselves, we do that by relations, and relatio relation means um, the differences, so the distances. And the distance comes with touch. So when you're in close touch with something, you know that I'm relating to that. And the small child is not knowing that with the mind, but it's knowing that with its whole being, that it is depending on the others. This is what allows for the co-creation and manifestation of an evolving global consciousness. Integral education is not a product, it's a process. An unending living experience. What you have decided to do, you must do, whatever the cost, even if you have to renew your effort over and over again, any number of times in order to do it. You will be strengthened by your effort, and you will have only to choose with discernment the goal to which you apply it. Learning is not as intangible as previously thought. When this research began, little was known of where to go except to start from the existing everyday life of TLC without having in mind a preset outcome. This film is the result of over 400 hours of filmed footage. Through the research, TLC became aware of its universal intentions reflected in everyday practices. That, is that what's important, to be able to define this correctly? I don't think that's what this is about. This is for me to just discover what it's about and how it comes alive for me inside. Because I don't know how I can make it alive in others unless it's first alive in me. I mean, I, I don't even know what my role is. I think my role is just to, to offer myself and to find and to use TLC as my, as my platform for growth and for learning. It doesn't matter what we're doing, as long as we're doing it from the, from the space of, of a motivation for inner growth, it doesn't matter what we're doing. It's all inner work. Everything external is great and we can work on external models and we can put things in place and we can write papers and we can, but if there is not a deeper inner work and that's each one on his own. The beauty of TLC for me is that I could live, I could feel, I could experience it. It's not about reading it theoretically in a book. There is a saying that um, for one child to be raised, you need a whole village. TLC is this village for me, but also it's not just that, it's uh, a laboratory. I'm living my dream, definitely.
And since it's an experiment, we've made many, many mistakes and we've learned from some of those mistakes and we've not learned from some of the mistakes. So it's also nice that the research press sends it saying this was the process. Maybe if you take the same thing and you try it in a different way, it might work. So there's learning there. Progress is more like an unending no, you're not, you don't reach certain goals and then you've arrived. There's so much you learn along the way. It just becomes more about the play, like just divine play, of just living, being, playing. Personally, I am not scared. I believe if a child, the better knows himself, the better he will succeed after. So for me, it's a great chance to give my little contribution to build up a different world, a different planet. When this, these skills are developed gradually from when they are small, at the age of 14, the aim is that they can really move into a free progress, which is like a, a skill for life to be able to have that freedom in their life. Free progress is what comes once a child has been educated in themselves to be able to be truly free. Education becomes the practice of freedom the means by which humans discover how to participate in the transformation of their world. This film is a tribute to all people who stay focused on the vision, nurturing the inner strength and beauty of free education. It is a wish to uphold our walking together on this journey for a new pedagogy for a new world. Pastor said Italian stuff. Those <laughs> <laughs> children don't no, like it. Yeah. Kids hate it.